look of it. The taste of it, the smell of it, the texture. I love gold so much that I even lost my genitalia in an unfortunate smelting accident. Hence the name, Gold Member. Just to remind everyone, this YouTube channel contains factual information only. It does not consider your personal circumstances, needs, objectives, or financial situation. All right, everyone. So I thought I'd do a deep dive on gold. I know there's been a, it's been a bit of a buzz lately, and just wanted to look at the big picture and see what we're thinking with gold. I can't give financial advice on whether or not I think gold is bullish or bearish. But I'm going to show you a whole bunch of charts that should make it very simple and easy for you to make up your own mind whether or not you think gold would be worth investing in the long run. So looking first of all just at the gold price here, uh, at the moment we're 2020 on the spot price and gold has served as a long term store of value for thousands of years and it's often been used as a form of payment but as you can see from the two pictures over here. Um, this is what's called a cup and handle pattern, which is where you have a prior and uptrend, you then have a rounded bottom and then a handle. And as you can see here, sometimes the cup and handle, you have what's called a high handle where the handle goes a little bit above and exactly the same thing has happened on this one as well, where you've come up prior uptrend, we've got our beautiful cup and then a high handle. And what we have actually done now is that we've broken out of the handle on the monthly. These are monthly candles. And we are at the moment closing those candles above prior resistance as well. So we haven't actually ever had a candle close above that resistance. And we have now, which is a good sign on the technical aspect there. So stocks versus gold and silver. So gold has long been considered a durable store of value and hedge against inflation. Over the long run, however, both stocks and bonds have outperformed the price increase in gold on average. So over the last 126 years, gold has only had 10,000% gains, whereas your S&P 500 has had 50,000% gains. So five times better outperformance than gold at the moment. That's rounded up, as you see, 47,000 47, and 9,671. So there's two ways you can look at that. You can either say one gold sucks and SP 500 is the better one or that it's actually due to more outperform gold. So there's two ways to look at that. That one, it's got four times as much to catch up or yeah, two, that it will stay behind. So if you've ever heard of Dow Theory, he's got some main principles and one of those main principles is that indices must confirm each other. And what that meant is that for a trend to be established, Dow postulated indices or market averages must confirm each other. This means that the signals that occur on one index must match or correspond the same signals on another. If one index such as the Dow Jones Industrial Average shows a new primary trend, but another remains in a primary downtrend, traders should not assume the new trend has begun. So what he used to do is he had the industrial average and the transportation average. And when the industrial average was making new highs, the transportation average should also be making new highs. If it wasn't, like in this picture here, it's making new lows, then you've got what's called divergence and that they're not confirming each other and they're not showing the same signal. I'm taking this same principle and going to apply it to gold over the the rest of this video. So I've shown you the spot price, cup and handle pattern. Is that bullish? Is it not? What we're now going to look at is let's look at some other uh, indices or charts that should match that gold. So should they be going up with it or against it to try and get a better, clearer picture? So the first one we we'll look at here is the GDX, which are your gold miners. And we're going to look at the Australian one first. So the GDX gives investors exposure to a diverse, diversified portfolio of companies involved in the gold mining industry. GDX aims to provide investment returns before fees and other costs, which track the performance of the index. It has a total of 48 publicly traded companies worldwide, and it has a blend of small, medium and large cap stocks there as well. So. 
what you can see from the picture here is that we had an uptrend, we've had a downtrend, and it has finally cr started to um, create a high, 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 low, and we're coming up. But we are at a key resistance right now. So market structure is bullish. It's in a high, 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 low, but we have hit a critical resistance right now. So it would be a good sign if we could break above that red zone there. Uh, and you would want to see it stay above this one here. Looking at the gold miners for the USA, same thing, 48 companies in there. The only thing is these have all of the American, the American gold miners as well. Not as bullish as the Australian ones. The Australian ones we know were up at this resistance here, but as you can see, there was a clear downtrend and we have created what's called a high, high, high low. So high, high, high low. So we are in a confirmed uptrend according to Dow Theory. So as long as we stay above that green zone, we are in an established uptrend and we'll be looking for it to come up against this resistance zone and that. So good thing is we are in an uptrend according to Dow Theory. Next chart we're going to look at here is what's called the GDX2 XAU ratio or the gold minus two gold ratio. So looking at the chart here, you can see that we've only ever been down at this range once before. That was over here. That time there was actually the bottom of the GFC, the great financial crash. So gold miners are historically in the bottom range, not seen since the GFC. When a commodity enters a true bull market, the miners will lead the rally and outperform the commodity. The potential for an explosive move to the upside in gold means that there is potential for an upward explosion in margins and therefore major outperformance against gold. So that is why if gold does go into a bull rally, then the actual the miners should lead the rally and should outperform. So here's a live version of the chart now. And as you can see here, 08, bottom of the um, GFC here, and we were down this range now. What it has formed is what's called a double bottom off bullish divergence, and it has broken the neckline, which is a confirmed double bottom. So as long as it stays above that neckline, we have a double bottom reversal pattern, and it should continue its uptrend up to here. So as you can see, whenever the ratio is up at this zone, this is when I guess gold miners are considered expensive compared to gold and when they're down at this range they're considered undervalued compared to the spot price of gold so that is that there bullish divergence off a double bottom that is a beautiful reversal pattern as seen on the technicals right now the next chart here is the GDXJ against gold. So the GDXJ is your junior gold miners. So the GDXJ and the GDX gold are ratios that show potential explosive upside if they can break out from these massive bases. The miners are sending early signals of divergence judging from recent price action. So as you can see on this one here with the GDX XAG ratio, it is coming down and it has hit a major support here and it is showing what's called complex bullish divergence of this. So you can see it's come down here on divergence and then as it's bottom over here, the RSI is going up showing divergence and weakening of the trend. So if we can establish a new uptrend and get above some key resistance levels, that would be a good sign for the junior miners to start outperforming the asset as well, which would be a good sign of that. Looking at your junior gold miners here, you can see that we were in a very clear, or we still are, sorry, still in a very clear downtrend. We have established a high, high, high low on the weekly time frame, so it is up now, but it does need to break this decline and ultimately get back above that swing high there to continue a good trend up. So we have on the larger picture had a higher, high, higher low, but it would need to also break above that one. So short term, break above that decline, medium term, break above that pivot point, and long term would need to break above that one there to establish the trends on that one. Okay, the next ratio is your GDXJ against the GDX ratio. So this is showing your junior gold miners against your, your gold miners. So the GDXJ to GDX ratio shows the risk on within the gold sector. 
investors take higher risk in pursuit of higher returns in favorable economic conditions. Risk off investors avoid higher risk and prioritize preserving their capital in unfavorable economic conditions. So I guess the simple way of thinking about this is if you think about your Russell 2000 against your SP 500, when the market is in a risk on an environment, money flows into your Russell 2000 and it will outperform the SP 500. When we turn more into a risk off environment, money will flow out of the Russell 2000 and more into the SP 500 so that it will outperform. So I guess what this is showing is that if this were to go bullish, it would show that the junior miners are outperforming the large miners, which would show risk on within the gold sector itself. So as you can see right now, it is down at a major, major support level. And it is again showing bullish divergence as it's come down here. So again, these are signals. They are not triggers. They are not to be acted upon. But it's just showing you that it is showing a weakening trend coming down to this support. And if we can then bounce off here and establish a new uptrend with a high, high, high low, then we could see the junior gold miners start to outperform your gold miners. Okay, next chart we're going to look at is the Dow to gold ratio. So relative to the SP 500 or the Dow Jones, gold remains in the bottom range. To reach some of those prior highs, it would have to raise three times to match the 2011 high, four times to reach the 1987 peak, six times to match the 1974 high, and over 17 times to reclaim that 1980 peak. Since it's a ratio, one asset could move more than the other, or that gold rises and stocks fall. So it doesn't mean that they're both gonna go up. It could mean that one's gonna go up, one's gonna go down as well, which would match up the ratio as well. So as you can see from this chart here, it's showing you that this was the time to buy financial assets leading up to the Great Depression. Then when the Great Depression hit, it was time to buy gold. Time to buy gold. Then it was time to be back in assets again over gold. And then once we peaked around the energy crisis, it was time to buy gold over equities. Coming down to 1980. Then when 1980 peaked, it was time to get into your equities again, up to the tech bubble. Then it was time to get into gold, precious metals, to the GFC, then that's it. And then it's been back in equities again up until now. And then we are back in this range here, starting to come back over again. So is it time to now come back into gold over equities and come back down to our bottom of range? That is what, that is the million dollar question. Let's dive deeper. This is the gold to Dow ratio over the top of the Schiller P ratio. If you don't, if you don't know what the Schiller P ratio is, it is the PE ratio adjusted for inflation. Okay, so the good thing about it is, again, it's not to be used to time markets and things like that, but it does let you know when things are historically overvalued or undervalued. And as you can see here, the blue line is the Schiller P ratio. So you can see here, this is the Great Depression, 1930, and the Schiller P ratio was 30. Okay. The average Schiller P ratio is 17. So whenever you're above 17, you are above the average Schiller P ratio. So we are nearly twice as twice as high as the, the average here. And then we had the Great Depression and we fell away. What you can notice is that when we were up there and equities were highly overvalued, the Dow gold Dow ratio was at the bottom of its range on support. See the inverse relationship? Then what do we have? We also, when we're up at 25, so not as extreme, but again, still above the average. And we're down at this support level again. We had the inflation and energy crisis, which is where then gold outperformed for the next decade. Then we had the tech bubble, which is where equities were at extreme valuations that have never been seen again. So up at the 44 zone up here. Again, gold to Dow ratio was on support. Very high expensive equities, support on gold to Dow ratio. See the inverse relationship? Now, we were 
up in the 30s again. We have retraced a bit since we've gone into a bit of a bear market, but we are still up in the higher range around the 30 mark, which even where we are right now has only been higher twice before, which was the tech bubble and the Great Depression. Okay, so we are equal to the Great Depression in equity prices right now. Only other time that was higher was the tech bubble. So keep that in mind. Again, we are on support. So knowing what we know about the Shilly Pure Ocean, equity has been expensive and looking, the only other two times that we've been that expensive was the Great Depression and the tech bubble. Let's actually look at the SP500 and see what that's showing us as well. So looking at the SP500 here, this is a yearly chart. So each bar is worth one year. You can see here, that is the Great Depression. That is the bottom of the Great Depression. That there is the tech bubble. Okay, so what I've done is I've drawn a line from the top of the Great Depression to the top of the tech bubble, and then it is extended across to where we are right now. That is the bottom here. You can see this midline has acted as resistance, 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 resistance flip to support, to support the whole way as well. So what were the, the two times that we've only ever had equity so expensive? Tech bubble, Great Depression. Where were we on this chart? At the resistance line. Where are we now? At the resistance line, at the same chiller period ratio we were during these times. So as you can see, the chart is also showing the same thing that's matching on the chiller period ratio and the ratios as well. All right, so what does that mean for gold right now? So there's a few key charts here that I wanna show you. First one I'm gonna look at is the market super cycle you can see here. And if you look at the green and the yellow ones, you can see that bonds and stocks are the ones that are riding up first. And it's actually bonds that start to roll over first and then equities will follow after that. Then it will be your economic activity. Okay, so those three kind of go in sync, which is where we are right now. If you think about it, bonds started to fall off at the beginning of 2021. Uh, the, yield, the bond yield started to, to roll up and then it's not until the end of that year, end of 2021, equity started to roll off and then we started to get that really negative macro environment. So going off that, when they start to roll over, what you should have is your commodities and your precious metals to start to rise out of the ashes from there. Going from that, we have what's called a uh, yield curve. And the yield curve uninverted at the end of, I mean, not the end of about March or April in 2021, and uh, 2022, sorry. And once it did that, that was a sign that a possible recession was looming because it has forecasted multiple recessions before because if you think about it if the two years are outperforming the 10 years it shouldn't happen like that if to break it down in a simple way you know if you were to give me a thousand dollars and i were to say how long you want to lock it up for two years or 10 years if i were to say 10 years you'd expect to get a lot better returns than just locking up for two years because i'm taking your money away from you for longer so that is why it's been a pretty good indicator of potential future recessions but the key thing that actually happens is it's not until actually the yield curve starts to uninvert, so come back out of the negative, that actually the biggest crashes tend to happen on equities. So this is probably, you've probably been hearing a lot lately that when the Fed pivots, stocks crash by more. And you're probably wondering, well, if we're in such bad times, why would the Fed print more money? And it's not because they want to, it's because they have to. Normally something's that broken that they have no choice but to step in and do something about it before things get worse. So that is why if you look back on the GFC and the dot-com bubble, things like that, we've had 30 to 50% crashes after they've had to step in because something had gotten that bad. Looking here on this chart up here, this is a chart of gold. These blue lines are when the Fed pivoted here when we dropped 50, 38. So as you can see here, this was the tech bubble when they pivoted. The Nasdaq crashed another nearly 40% after that point. As you can see from gold, it continued its uptrend. It did not crash along with equities. Same here on the GFC, they pivoted, equities fell another 50%. What did gold do? It continued its uptrend. It did not crash 50% along with equities. 
So I guess the thing I'm trying to say here is when the Fed pivots and the yield curve uninverts, gold does not crash along with equities. It actually starts to outperform. So this is where it can get a bit uh, a bit sticky because gold has been crashing in the beginning stages and historically it does because historically people need to sell assets to pay for their uh, their margins, their margin loans to get out of debt. And then once all that kind of settles down, then it actually is a store of value. So a lot of the retailers flock to gold in the early stages, which is when you shouldn't. You shouldn't actually flock to gold until actually after the Fed pivots. And that is when historically it has actually continued to soar. So I'm gonna go over to the, the yield curve now and show you that on the charts. Okay, so what you can see here is your tech bubble, 01 here, you've got GFC, COVID, and we are down here now. Where I've got this little red dot, that is when the Fed pivoted and we uninverted, you can see we've come up. If you look at the dates, that was April 01. The tech bubble started at the beginning so five months in, they pivoted and then the biggest crash kept happening and we didn't actually bottom until there, 03. So equities kept getting smashed and gold was outperforming as I showed you. Here in October 07, same thing. We know that the GFC was in a bear market long before that and then it came up and it didn't actually bottom until later on in 08. And then most recently with COVID, we had, you can see this happened in December 2019, and then we know that that didn't bottom until March. So you can see we had, it's not until it actually uninverted that the biggest crash happened, and then we saw that gold outperform. So where are we now? So looking at where we are right now, you can see we've had this falling wedge and we've had it on bullish divergence. You can see lower end price, higher in RSI, divergence. What we now have here is a higher high, a higher low. If it was to break up, we have the beginning of an uptrend. High high, high low would confirm the trend has changed, which would confirm that we're potentially going to uninvert, which would confirm a Fed pivot. Okay, which has historically led to gold going into a bull run and equities getting smashed a further 30 to 50%. So these are things to keep in mind when looking at all of the gold. And I think it's important if you look at the big picture, if you look at all of the charts, what they are all saying, you can kind of pretty easily see what could be happening with precious metals and gold moving forward. I hope this video helped everyone. If it did, please like the video subscribe to more and there will be a lot more videos like this coming out in the future. So before I go, let me know in the comment section, are you bullish or are you bearish on gold moving forward in the next couple of years? Thanks everyone.